For this week's project, I'm building a platform bed from walnut with floating shelves, a sheepskin headboard, and it has lights. The frame of the headboard is going to be mitered at the corners, so to be sure they come out nice and tight, I'm taking a little extra time prepping the material. I started out ripping the rough stock a little wider than needed at the table saw, so if there was any tension in the wood and it worked, I would have enough material to correct it at the joiner and planer. Once I had all the material squared up, I set up a feather board at the table saw to help keep it tight to the fence while I ripped it to the final width. I then set up the table saw to cut the miters. Since the material was a bit long, I clamped it to the miter gauge to help keep the material from wobbling around during the cut. This helped make a nice, perfect 45 degree miter. Then I did a test fit to be sure all the corners were square and lined up. Once I was satisfied with the fit, I used some CA glue to add some pine blocks to give me something to clamp to to hold the joints tight while glue up. I used a domino in each corner to strengthen the joint and a slow setting epoxy so I would have plenty of time to finesse the fit of each miter. While the frame was drying, I moved on to making the bed rail to go underneath the headboard. This piece is what the mattress supports will be attached to. Since the support would be hidden under the mattress, I used alder as a cheaper wood. Once I had the piece cut to length, milled flat, and squared at the joiner, I cut it to final width at the table saw. I centered the rail on the bottom of the frame and temporarily clamped it in place. Once held in place, I marked out some dominoes to add some strength and keep the pieces aligned during glue up. From there it was gluing in the dominoes and spreading some glue on the rail and clamping it up. Now to beef up the frame and to add some visual appeal, I added a walnut filler strip where the mattress and lower shelf start. I used some dominoes to help keep it aligned to the face of the frame during glue up. I used parallel clamps that were long enough to catch the top rail of the headboard frame to keep everything in plane. This made gluing up the filler strip much easier. The headboard is almost done except for the floating shelf and sheepskin but I'll come back to that towards the end of the build. Right now I'm joining and milling up some four quarter alder for the frame that supports the mattress. These are going to be attached to the side skirt boards and footboard. I ripped them just tall enough so they would accept the knockdown hardware and set just below the walnut platform to hold the mattress in place. Then I cut them to length. Since they are so unwieldy, I clamped them to the miter gauge when I cut them to ensure I got a nice straight cut. Then I milled up a piece of walnut for the skirt part of the footboard and glued the alder mattress support to it.
While the glue was drying on the footboard, I laid out the knockdown hardware on the headboard. I built a plywood jig the same width as the hardware and clamped it down to my layout lines. To set the depth of cut, I bottomed out the router bit and used the hardware itself to set the depth stop on the router. Then using a pattern bit, I followed the template and routed out the notch for the hardware to sit in. I cleaned up the round corners left by the router bit and repeated the same process for all four corners of the bed. There was one more step. The mating piece needed a place for the hooks to go into the wood and not interfere with the two pieces latching together. I laid out the relief slots with a pencil and using a similar width router bit, I freehand routed out the slots. To attach them it was easy enough, just pre-drilled some holes and screwed them down. Then it was the same operation for attaching the mating pieces to the skirt board. Now I'm on to building the walnut skirt boards, ripping the width and milling to thickness. I cut them to length using the same clamping methods as before. This has worked out really well at getting perfectly square ends on long boards. I wanted to be sure I couldn't see the end grain of the alder on the headboard, so I notched the side skirt board so it would hide the end grain when installed. I held the piece in place and laid out for the notch. I forgot to hit the record button when I cut the notch, but here it is. I spread some glue on the support rail and aligned it to the edge of the notch for a tight fit when the headboard was installed. Once I got it all lined up, I just tacked it in place with a brad nail while I lined up the other end. There was a slight bow in the center, so I pulled it in place with a clamp and put a few brads in it until the glue dried. Then I milled up some 8 quarter walnut for the platform frame that is going around the mattress. Cut it to length with the same clamping method to the miter gauge. Lay out for some dominoes to attach the top to the skirt board. and glued and clamped it all together. It took a bit to get the first few dominoes lined up, but once it was together, the dominoes kept it all lined up while I got it in the clamps.
Once the glue is dry, I sanded off the squeeze out and did a little test fit to be sure the skirt board would pull tight to the headboard using the hardware. Now I needed to make a platform for the mattress to sit on, so I ripped a bunch of slats to support the mattress, but to reduce the shipping weight and make it so I could roll up the slats together, I beveled the sides. I cut each one to length and test fit them. I installed them the full length of the bed. If you don't use a box spring, the mattress has to be fully supported underneath or you void your warranty. Before I was done, I did install a center support using the same hardware as the sides to help support the mattress slats. Then at the end of the build, I stapled on some nylon strapping to keep all the slats together during shipping and allowed me just to roll them up together. Back to the headboard, it's time to build the floating shelves. Since the shelves are going to be modern in design, with no ingrain showing, I'm going to veneer them and miter all four corners. I started off by shop sawing all the veneer I needed at the bandsaw. And then cleaned up the saw marks at the planer. I cut the veneer to the width and length I needed and then used some veneer tape to prep them for glue up. Had quite a few parts to glue up, so I got the veneer bag ready to go so I wouldn't waste any time and I could load the bag quickly. I always glue the seam in case there's any shrinkage in the veneer, it won't pull apart at the seam. I tape both ends to hold it together while I slide it in the bag. I kept an eye on the clock so I wouldn't go too long between the first piece I added glue to and the time I needed to seal the bag to apply pressure. I hooked the vacuum up and made sure everything stayed in place while I was loading the bag and I left it under pressure for about 30 minutes before taking everything out. Once out of the bag, I started to cut them to size. I set a stop on the miter gauge to be sure all the pieces would come out exactly the same length. You can cut a perfect miter, but it's not going to close tight on all edges if they are not the same length. While I had the stop set up on the miter gauge, I cut the front and side pieces as well. Then I ripped all the parts to the appropriate width. Since the shelves have five pieces to hold together and I have to get eight miters lined up perfectly at the same time, I added a few dominoes to act as a third hand to help hold things in place while I got everything adjusted. To cut the dominoes on these narrow fronts, I screwed a stop block to my table with the opposing 45 degree angle so it would trap the narrow pieces making it safer to cut the mortises. To bring the inside of the shelf to the right thickness, as well as give me some meat to screw to in installing the shelf on the headboard, I glued and tacked in place a plywood filler strip. Then I started applying the glue and dominoes to all the surfaces as I worked my way around the shelf. Once I had all the parts in place, I used some CA glue along with some glue blocks so I could pull the miters tight with clamps and adjust the fit as I went. I used a slow setting epoxy for this glue up so I had plenty of working time to make adjustments to ensure I had tight miters on all sides. I did the same process for all four shelves.
Once the epoxy was dry, I removed the clamps and knocked off the glue blocks with a light tap from a mountain chisel. Now that the shelves are made, it was time to have something to attach them to. I ripped a piece of plywood to size and laid out for the shelves and two reading lights. I drilled a hole on each side of the plywood for the base of the reading lights to go through. I then attached a spacer block so the upholster would know how big the base of the light is. I used the forester bit just to help keep things lined up. I did a quick test fit and sent the plywood sheet up the street to my upholster friend to have him apply the sheepskin. Don't worry, no actual sheep were skinned in the making of this bed. It's a synthetic sheepskin, made from chemicals. While the plywood panel is getting upholstered with our synthetic sheepskin, I milled up and installed a strip of wood and attached it to the inside frame. This will give us something to screw our sheepskin panel to. I installed the cleat on all four sides. Once I got the sheepskin back from the upholster, I unwrapped it and it slid perfectly into place. I then used an air hose to fluff the fibers back up. To attach to the frame, I screwed it to the cleat that I had installed earlier. Now it was time to install the floating shelves, but I needed to make a custom bracket to give the shelves some strength in case someone got a little frisky they wouldn't rip off the shelves. So I started out cutting some flat bar with the same width as the shelves and cleaned up the burr with the grinder. Next I laid out a hole pattern so I could bolt the headboard and the shelves together. I center punched each hole so the drill bit wouldn't wander when I got it started. Then I just spent some time at the drill press drilling out all the holes. I cut some round bar to act as support brackets. Then built a jig out of scrap plywood to hold the pieces in place as I welded them together. Then I used that same block to locate and drill the corresponding holes in the shelf. I slid the brackets in from the back side and attached them with some screws and then slid the shelf onto the brackets, securing them with some long lag bolts. Installing the lights was pretty simple. I fed the wire through the hole, attached the mounting bracket to the light, and attached the bracket to the back of the bed. Before shipping it off, I put a nice piece of plywood over the back to cover up all the wires and screws and I have a completed finished bed.